Hey everybody, welcome back to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colwyn Way, and this is my first live back since, oh, for about four weeks now. Um, a couple of thank yous uh, to make. One to David Drescher of Turnfest over in Brisbane for, for looking after me so well um, at, that, uh, at that wonderful event. And if you're ever in the area around Brisbane in Australia um, at the right time of year, which was March, um, then do look up that show. It's a really, really good event. Turnfest, have a look at it on the, on the internet. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and we had a few days holiday after that as well and also i want to make um another thank you to the uh, guys at midwell's uh, wood turning club for uh, looking after me last sunday we done a demonstration there um and i had a, a, a fab time so no thank you everybody but we're back to it now back to a schedule back to um a routine as it were and um in the uk okay this time of year um, and if you're watching this on a recorded, we're in April now, so it's springtime. So this is the time where everybody wants to get out in their garden and start planting. So we've had a look at some sort of outdoor-inspired, garden-inspired um, projects, and I've picked a couple. For, so the next two weeks, we're going to look at um, garden tools. The first one's quite a nice one. I've seen these for sale on the internet um, and in various gardening shops. But there's a little seed um, box maker. So if I show you what, what I mean, it's a little seed box, or is that a bit, a bit of newspaper really? So there we are. It's a little pod for you to put your um, compost in and then to put your seeds or seedlings in. The beauty of these, of course, you're recycling newspaper, but you can plant the seeds, or the seedlings in with the paper still there. You don't have to take them out. They're, obviously, over time, they start to get a little bit um, degrade sort of thing. Um, this is the, the actual pot that we're going to make. Okay. So we have two parts, and we've got the main part, which is going to be drilled to start with, and then we have, it's almost like a handle at the top here, and then the little base. So we're going to put the base in, give it a couple of turns, and that creates a part. I'll demonstrate. I'll do a little a little Blue Peter uh, moment for you. For those people that uh, don't know what Blue Peter is, if you're in the States or something like that, a Blue Peter was a kid's program back in the day. And they always used to make things like this and uh, have one already made. And so this is one I prepared earlier. We know that as a Blue Peter moment. So here we go. I've made two marks on here. Um, this one's to give me a, a three inch or 75 mil pot. This one, a two inch or 50 mil pot. So what I'm going to do is roll up my paper. Don't do it too tight. That's one, one little trick that I got. I caught myself out in um, the first couple that I made that they get stuck onto your maker. So then you're going to roll that up, just pinch in the bottom and pop that in the cup. Right, give it a couple of twists. And then you should have your little pot. All right, really, really handy. Okay, so we are just look at the making. It's not a, a, a difficult piece of kit to make. You can see what we've done. I'm going to drill that hole first after we've roughed down and then hold back between centers to rough that shape around. And then we're going to make this little, uh, the little base for it. And again, it's just a little trophy base bottom, basically, uh, with a recess in. So a lot of simple turning. However, um, quite an interesting bit of work holding on the lathe solutions to look at those sorts of things so we're all good next week i know i'm sort of skipping ahead a little bit next week we're going to do a couple of line markers so let's just go to that overhead again ben sorry i'm messing you around um so a couple of little line markers big knitting needles basically um and we'll do a little tamper okay so when you've made your or sown your seeds in a tray you, you can tamp the the earth down um, and a couple of little dibbers, okay? This is most people's go-to. When they start turning, they know how to turn, or well, they get taught how to turn a dibber. That one, a nice little one for our little seed pots that we're making today, and obviously a much bigger one there. So that's next week. So let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Let's just pop those to one side, and let's start. I've got a couple of pieces of ash to do this project. Okay, so let's get our pieces of ash in the way. And before I start, let me introduce Ben. He's going to be doing the questions with an assistant we got hillary there today she's helping ben out so um between them they're going to be doing the cameras and the questions so if you suddenly hear ben's voice change and go a little bit higher you know what's happened hillary's taking over for a minute okay so piece of ash quite a nice color in this piece of ash actually you've got some olive on one side you've got the sap on the other 
we're just going to hold between centers to do the basic roughing down because I need to drill a hole in one end of this one. Um, I want to rough down to a near cylinder and true everything up so I can hold it in a chuck. Okay. How are we doing, Ben? Have we got any questions so far? Yes, so we've got a question here. Um, a question from Broom Rider. What's the dipper fork, Owen? From who? Broom Rider. Broom Rider. <laughs> a dipper. Dipper. Dibber, in my best southern accent. Um, this particular one's divided but divided up into inch increments and it's fairly big so this would be for planting for putting the hole in the soil um, for planting your your sapling seedlings this one is more again it could be used for the same thing i've done this in half inch in increments it could be done for um, smaller seedlings little saplings um, or for um, sowing little seeds that sort of thing if you're doing sweet peas that sort of stuff beans um, so it's just a slightly smaller version that's all yes ben Saying, uh, maybe another name for it is a dibble stick. A dibble stick. <laughs> See, I, I haven't, but it's cooler than dibber, isn't it? <laughs> and Jim's saying, can you turn him a gardener to do his gardening? <laughs> if only. If only. Jim, gardening should be fun. It's like turning. It's 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 the fun thing to do, especially this time of year. Maybe not in the UK at the moment. It's a little bit cold still, but um, there. So, right, well, what are we going to do first? It's simple. I say simple turning, it's basic turning, not necessarily simple. Depends on your skill level. We're going to rough down to a cylinder. I'm going to rough down to a cylinder, then I'm going to hold that cylinder to be drilled. Um, so before I do too much roughing down, I need to dis decide how big or what jaw I'm going to use to hold the rough down piece. So look what I'm going to do first. Let's take that chuck. I've got a set of eight jaws here. To be honest, you're going to turn to the jaws you have. Okay, so these are what we refer to H jaws. Okay, and we're just going to expand into that inner recess. So there's that diameter. That means I'm not going to turn all the way down to a cylinder. You can see, whether you can see that. Okay, we're a little bit smaller than the diameter, so I can turn down to a near cylinder. So that's cool. We'll go with a roughing gouge. There we go. Let's we'll just measure that. I think we're probably there um, in terms of diameter. Yeah, we're there with diameter. So that's fine. We can leave that. What we do need to do, though, is just tidy up that underside. So um, let me just use the parting tool to give that a nice clean cut. So now we've got true faces there. We've got a face here is going to be clean. So whatever touches the chuck, that will be fine. And the same on the outside edge there. So that's prepped and ready. And if you're going to make a few of these... Get all your blanks prepped to that. Before I go and add that to the lathe, I'm just going to do a, a kiss test between centers, only because I've been using the lathe to do a bigger bowl earlier, and I had to swivel the headstock. So I want to make sure that I'm now lined up. Oh, we're all lined up there now. So let's just swap that around. Make sure you pick the end that you've just cleaned up. Just before I tighten up too much, make sure we're nice and round. You can always bring up the tailstock, you know, to line things up if you want to. That's good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So we can start drilling immediately. So let's just swap out our tailstock center. I'm going to put a drill chuck in here. I've got a 42 mil bit. But to be honest, you, you might want to have different size of, of pots. 
So you're going to have different sizes of, of starting up material. So that diff means different sizes of drill bit. So just cater it for the size of pot you want. Okay. I've already said that I'm starting off with a 50 mil piece um, in diameter. And we're aiming to get a four to five mil um, wall thickness around this pot maker. Okay. And what I mean wall thickness, let me show you. So around this area here, four to five millimeters. Um, and that's perfect. Uh, yes, Ben, another question. Um, so we've got quite a few oh. questions here. Sorry, um, Hillary. That's right. <laughs> a question from Ward Wilson. Are H jaws larger or smaller than C jaws? Um, hello, Ward. We're going to be meeting up, I think, in the summer. Um, oh, I, oh I, good question. Um, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. So internal. So H jaws are... Um, they're a gripper type jaw, where a C jaw is a one gripper tooth on the inside and a dovetail on the outside. So that's its first difference. But I'm looking here; they're exactly the same internal diameter, and the H jaw is, has, has a slightly larger external di diameter by about three mil, or about eighth of an inch. Okay, well, um, but yeah, internal is exactly the same. That's on the optimum, of course. Another question from Robert Richards. Why don't you use a speed sizer? For? I think just for getting the size on your... Um, oh, for the spindle. The spindle. Speed sizer works brilliantly when you're working on the, the radius. So when you're working on the half diameter, um, you can set dividers to it. But when you're working on the whole diameter, you can't. Okay, it has a single side, okay, because we register external and internal. So for dividers, perfect. For calipers, no, I measure directly to the jaw. I'm right for the minute. Um, no, we've got a couple more questions. I'm going to turn up the volume on our microphone. Anybody think I've been away for a while? <laughs> um, so Fred Frederick Day asks, is it worth finishing with these items with any type of oils for protection or is it better leaving them raw? Do you know what, Frederick? I So I thought about that and I've got a few wooden implements at home for, for the garden and I've not finished them because they get absolutely battered. Um, and, the, you know, the, whatever oil on, you, you might get a little bit of protection to start with. Um, so I don't bother. I just go straight on with a natural timber and as long as you wipe them off, clean them off, Put them back in the um, in the shed or the greenhouse afterwards. They seem to last a long, long time. I mean, I've got um, uh, sort of dibbers and tool handles that are decades old, so I haven't bothered. The only thing I would say though is, if you're going to give them as a gift or if you're going to sell them, then finish with a bit of oil does do a nice, you know, is a nice job. Um, it just looks a bit better, that's all. But in terms of the longevity, I don't think it makes a big difference, you know. Okay. And, and the other thing I would also say, if one wears out, then you can make another one. Gives you a bit more practice. Yes, Beth. And just another question from Cliff Bohin. Um, is the parting tool straight or diamond? That parting tool is straight. I don't like diamond parting tools. It's my preference, personally. Um, the reason I prefer a straight one is I can use the tool. As I push in, I put a very slight um, bit of pressure on the top edge. That then means that this surface, not the front, but this surface here, can um, do a little bit of side scraping as well. All right. So my preference, I just like those those flat edges. Right. So we're going to drill down to about oh, about ten mil deep. Might be a little bit of screeching in a minute, everybody. So just prepare yourself. And before I withdraw that, I'm going to stop the lathe and release some pressure. The reason I've done that is I know the noise that it can make, and we need to go in a bit deeper, and I don't quite like it. So I just stopped before it made that noise. There we go. I didn't need to worry about clearing swarf because we didn't really make enough to clog the piece up. Okay, so there we go. Um, Ge no, I mean, the general rule is for end grain drilling, it's a, a sawtooth bit because they chisel the timber out. Um, I was using a wave cutter there, which is working quite well. Um, but general, genuine um, cutting forstner bits 
will burn a little bit more. Um, so just be careful. We're fine on this sort of depth. But if you want to go in really, really deep for something like a, a salt and pepper or, uh, yeah, salt and pepper grinder, um, then you want to go for a reg an actual sawtooth cutter. Think about how they cut the timber. So they'll be chiseling out as opposed to directly um, cutting that end grain. Um, right. So again, we're going to swap out this tailstock center and go for a single pointed tailstock center now. And we'll go back with, I'm going to go for a smaller drive. So I'm going to go to the little 16 mil, the 5.8 um, pro drive there. So tailstock center there, take the chuck off. So basically that's that blank prepped and ready. Pop that out the way for a minute. Um, Pro drive. We've already got our centers, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to put the Pro drive up there. There we are. We. There is no doubt that that's going to be centered because we're using the same centers we've just used. We're using the center of the drill bit that was that was drilling that uh, hole, so we know that the centers are going to be right. So what I need to do now, we're going to just um, trim this down to a full round, tidy up this edge, and then we'll do our shape. So it's quite a, prick, a, quick, a quick thing to, to make. Uh, rough and gouges. Support for choice. So I'm going to go up in speed. Incidentally, when we were drilling there, I dropped it down to about 1,000 revs. All right, so much slower than the roughing down process. Now I can turn the laser speed back up again. Check for rounds. A little bit more. There we are. That's good. Now, we were talking about the parting tool, weren't we? And we, the difference between the, uh, a straight-sided and a, and a um, diamond. This is why I like the straight-sided. So now I can use that side of the parting tool to side scrape up. Just by putting a little bit of pressure on that top edge. Not using the front of the parting tool, I'm just using the side. And it gives a lovely little scrape. And all I want to do there is just take off enough to make sure it's a clean finish and we've got rid of all that old saw cut. And it is. It's good. And let's just double check whilst we're here. We got rid of all the old. There's a little bit of um, of the old bandsaw mark there. So let's just get the skew going. And we'll just do a final little bit of cleaning up. Okay, drop the tool rest back down again. Let's get those marks in. So I use three inch and two inch as a guide. So we'll do the same. There we are. And we're going to put those marks in with a skew and then we'll burn them in. Burn skew chisel. So just a shallow V cut, long point doing the work. Remove the tool rest. Get our burner. shape let's go for i'm going to use a small bowl gouge to start with my preference really
And we'll do a little like a, a little ball top here. We'll tidy this off afterwards with a little sander. Let's just take a little bit more depth away here. There we are. That's okay. Let's come around the top a little bit more. We'll get the skew in there. And... And again, back to that parting tool. I think we, we've got enough room, look. Using that little side scrape. So that's leaving just a little nib. We can sand that now. And I'm not going to do a, a huge amount of sanding, but I do want to finish this for you. We'll get the dust extractor running. I'll start with a 150 grit. I won't start too coarse. And, you know, this is a working implement. We don't need to go crazy with the finish. So that was, um, what was that? That was a 150. I lied, sorry. I inadvertently picked up the 100. This is a 150. Let's go, I need a 240. go and i will go to a 400 but we don't need to go any further than that 400 really because it changes the sheen of the, the timber not going to get rid of many scratches but there we are that'll do us so you could put you could put a finish on there if you wanted to put a bit of oil on absolutely no problem but that's a nice bit of nice bit of timber actually yes ben Um, so, a couple of questions, Colwyn. First one came from Callum, and he was asking about your Colwyn Way signature skew that hasn't been out for a while, and then you immediately took it uh, and used it. Um, but uh, we've got Donna asking here. She's a bit concerned about your bracelets, your bracelets. I was here. hoping no one was going to see them. But <laughs> I started working, and I suddenly thought, saw them dangling down there. I thought, right, I'm... No one's going to see that, so I'll leave them for the minute. But now you've mentioned it, Donna, they're coming off. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. All right. Uh, right, there we are, bare arms again. Um, that's now off. Okay, so what we have to do now, of course, is just tidy up that little top at the bottom. That little top at the bottom, that little nib at the top. So we'll just pop a chuck on. So I want to use, I'm going to put a C jaw on only because I know that the inner part of the mounting jaw closes enough for me then to hold one of my power sanding heads. Let's get a, that one should be all right. That was about a 240 grit, I think. There we are. 
I will just pop that dust extractor back on again. There we are. Got a nice finish on there. We're just getting rid of any signs of work holding, really. All right. There we go. Let's just turn. Get that off. Turn the extractor off. And just look at where we are so far in the project. So we've got we've got the top section done. Okay, that's ready. That was a relatively straightforward piece to do. We now need to do the base that's going to accept that. So one thing I learned fairly quickly in making these is that we don't want to make this too tight because we've got a, um, an amount of paper that's going to be going in there. So you make it too tight and it's just going to get stuck and it, it won't work. So I would guess, hazard a guess there, there's about probably just over a sixteenth, so about a mil and a half. Um, gap both internal and external so there's plenty of wiggle room as it were okay it's a fairly simple process we've already got the, something to measure there but before we get even get to this point what we're going to do is just round our, our blank down and create a whole point on the back just like you would any trophy base so a little recess basically okay and then we'll get them together we will test this one when we finish so there's nowhere to hide um it has to work so let's go for, I'm going to go for a slightly bigger um, pro drive type center. Well, not pro drive type, a pro drive. And then I'm going to use um, a ring center in the tail stop, not a single pointed center. The reason I do that, um, again, let me just get these up to show you. So a single pointed center, a single pointed center um, has a single point, obviously. Um, where a ring center has a ring around that single point. The ring stops that single point from going in too deep. I don't want that to happen with the next bit, so that's why I'm choosing the ring center. Then you think like uh, this sort of thing or, or soft punky timbers, it's always good to go with a ring center. It just prevents that, that center going in too far. Yes, Ben, sorry, I'm waffling. Hi, Corinne. Um, a uh, gentleman wood turner has asked, have you seen the Richard finely screw egg challenge on Instagram? And are you going to do it? Oh, I wouldn't be involved in anything like that. <laughs> uh, Mark, thank you very much for um, happy birthday for the weekend, by the way, I completely missed it. Um, but yes, um, I have seen it. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Right, we're good. Any more questions for the minute? Sorry, I keep calling you um, uh, Ben, Hillary. <laughs> I don't mean it. <laughs> right, so all I'm going to do, rough down to a cylinder, we can then hold that in a chuck, and I haven't looked at my chucks. But yeah, we can hold that in a chuck, so or jaw. So lay speed zero, turn the lathe on. Just going to rough out the corners first. You could, of course, pre-cut um, <coughs> this or on the bandsaw, so you don't have corners to deal with. down to a cylinder now i'm going to make my hold point so we're going to use we're going to use a set of o'donnell's my favorite ods the 112s and i want to make a little a little foot to hold the piece so i can make a recess don't want to use too much because well the, the bit of timber is a bit too thick anyway but i don't want to use too much because let's say for instance 
you may not have a piece of timber that is too thick and you want to limit how much timber um, or how thin this piece becomes. All I've done, look, is created a hole point, okay? Just all ready now to put the chuck on. So again, you would prep all of these if you're doing a batch for, for, for selling at uh, craft shows or or in, in shops, do a batch, get in at that point before you change the lathe over, okay? You may just want to make one. You might just be happy hobby turner at home, just want to make one for your own garden or gift for friends, that sort of thing. No problem. Um, so O'Donnell's, the OD 112's, O'Donnell 112's, 112 just stands for inch and a half um, because there are three sizes in the range, uh, OD1, OD112, and OD2. And this is the middle size. Of course, there is a, a set as well, which comprises of the OD2, um, where you put inserts in to make up the other sizes. Look at that. Easy. ODs, ODs. So let me measure. I don't think I've got my ODs on my plate. No, I don't. So I'm just going to take that off and measure the recess I need. In this case, so 54 mil recess I want to turn. Right, so I'll set my dividers. 27. And that's going to be my, my recess. I think actually I can take the tail stop right out of my way for the minute. Small bowl gouge. Play speed's fine. Tourist needs to be down low enough to get to that center point. So just doing a pull cut initially, just to take off all the old timber. Now I can do a push cut if you want. So just cleaning the surface. Now I can mark. So take my dividers, which are preset. If you can't see center, just dab your pencil. There's the recess. Um, let's go with parting tool to start off with, just to get to depth. Um, and this doesn't need to be deep. Uh, you know, three mil, eighth of an inch is fine. And then again, I'm gonna go back to the bowl gouge, just clean off that little bit of waste in the center. course skew time dovetail just because let's sand it we might as well times with us it's on our side so let's go with 150 240 Okay, over there for questions. Now that'll do What we need from you guys uh, as well, we, we, we obviously have weekly discussions as to what's happening, where we're going, all those sorts of things. We're at that point again where I'm going to, in a few weeks' time, probably... Um, do another Q and A. So I'd like a few of your questions, your wood turning based questions for me to do a question and answer session. And the way that works is whatever questions you send in, I'll set up and prime myself for those with projects and so on. But then we'll field actual questions on the day as well. Okay. So I need a few questions to get the ball rolling, sort of thing. Um, just email them into Woodworking Wisdom, 
Um, and also your suggestions, you know, we're trying to come up with a different project each week, not just in the turning side of things, but also in, in Ben's craft room um, and in the hand tool room with Jason as well. So if you have any suggestions um, or ideas, we do try and get to every single one that we do. We've had some corkers in the in the past, um, weeble wobbles and penguins and all sorts of things. So um, please keep them coming because that's what that's what drives us. That's what helps us to, to keep doing these every single week. So we've made our recess. All we need to do now is start our shape. Most important thing first, though. So let's get that recess done. And if you think, oh, okay, this should be a little bit, a little bit smaller in, in thickness, then do that. Um, I just grabbed a piece of timber from the shelf sort of thing, hence the reason it's so big. But I think I'll keep this one quite chunky. And because we've got the luxury of not having to make this fit absolutely spot on, I can then just roughly center up again with my dividers. And I will just check, we'll just double check each time. So there we are. And I'm gonna use the parting tool. And then I'm, I want to check, make sure that I've made any silly mistakes. Check if that'll fit. So, right, the external diameter is perfect, but it's the internal one still a bit too big. So I need to get that down a little bit. And remember, it was a 10 mil hole that we drilled in the bottom, in, as in a 10 mil deep hole. So three eighths ish, a little bit bigger than three eighths. Like that. That's fine. It's binding at the bottom, so I need to address that. I don't want that binding. And it needs to bottom out as well. We are fully down, happy with that. So that's that recess done. So you can just shape now. It's the easy bit left. Go with a small bowl gouge. Just going to give that a little clean up. Yeah, just because. little bit of sanding. So what?
Ricky por ahí. And we'll finish with a 400. Actually, quite a nice piece of timber, this. There's quite a lot of olive in it. Um, so that can now be taken off. I guess we better give it a bit of a bit of a run through so we just check once again we've got that fitting in there nicely okay let's get the bit of board up get some newspaper um it does you know i've tried to do this with printer paper and printer paper is too thick newspaper is perfect i started off here at 120 um so do about four and a half, four and three quarters works on this size, remember. So we're going to go to the biggest or the longest line, loosely wrap. Remember, don't do it tightly, otherwise you'll never get the thing off. Fold him in. In the little slot. Give him a couple of turns. And you have your little paper pot ready to fill with compost and put your seeds in. Okay, nice little job for the evening. Sat in front of the TV, you can make your paper pots. Might save you a few bob as well. There we are. Any questions, um, Ben and Hillary, before we before we wrap up, wrap up today? Uh, yes, uh, Andrew May. Just can you just repeat how um, people can send in questions and ideas? <coughs> Where do they submit them to? Yeah, just go straight to the Woodworking Wisdom. I think the links for that are on the YouTube uh, channel, so they'll be around this video. Um, email us, uh, and just with all your suggestions and all your questions. What, ben, you know the, the um, email address off by heart. What is it? Yeah, so I've just popped it in the chat there. It's um, woodworkingwisdom at axminstertools.com. Um, but I, we thought we'd just ask the question because sometimes people don't have the chat window open and um, it'd be nice to hear it out loud. Yeah, perfect. There we are. Any more before we go? Um, no, just lots of people saying um, thanks for the session. Nice to see you back, Colin. A um, couple of comments on your tan. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of... I was a very sensible boy <laughs> wasn't when I was out there. Lots of sunshine, but lots of sunscreen as well. Slips up, stop and all that. <laughs> Uh, thank you ever so much, everybody. Don't forget, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Share us around with as many people as you can or tell us, tell them about us and um, and subscribe to the channel, of course. Um, and until next time, um, what are we doing on Thursday, Ben? I'm dropping you in it again. It's um, So Thursday I'm doing, uh, well, it's a pre-recorded one, but it's a crescent pen holder. So single pen holder for all the pen turners out there to display their pens on them um, mm. on their stools and stuff on their stools excellent <laughs> yeah. so you'll see a younger ben um because it's a pre-record um <laughs> on thursday and don't forget pot and shed tools next week so if you want to uh, have a look at that pop by on tuesday thanks again everybody see you next time Bye bye